battens are a constant source of wear in all sails, but fully battened sails constitute a special problem since their battens are tied in under pressure to help give the sail draft. The result is the batten tends to poke their way through the sail's loft, unless this special in protector is installed. As you can see here in the video, all that's necessary is to mark the holes, then use a 1 8 inch punch and create the holes for the screws that will be inserted. You will notice that these two batten end protectors are not exactly the same. You want to use the open ended one and place it on top of where the batten uh, tape has been installed or the pocket for the batten insertion. The other one goes on the back side. This is the back side of the sail, so the tape for the batten insertion or the sleeve for the batten insertion is obviously on the other side of this assembly. Okay, then insert the screws in through those holes. Once that's done, we'll concentrate on the other side. This is the open end uh, batten and protector side, and we'll insert it and put the nuts that fit right into those uh, holes. Then we'll take a standard screwdriver and we'll tighten this assembly together. The opening for the insertion of the webbing or the shackle needs to be opened up. We're using a 1 8 inch punch here and just punching that hole open. You can also use the HSO blade for the Ingle hot knife. We suggest using webbing to attach your slug or slide. If you need to order a shackle, it may need to be a special order. And so, in lieu of the shackle, we're going to use webbing. This is a three-quarter inch polyester tubular webbing, and we really recommend this for almost all of the batten end protectors. It makes installation easy, and no special order is needed. We're going to use one of these slugs as an example. All that's necessary is to first gauge how much webbing you need for each installation. Then cut it with a hot knife to avoid any unraveling of the webbing. We'll use double sided seam stick or basting tape here to help prevent the webbing from sliding once we have it in position. We highly recommend the use of double sided tape to make your projects always come out easier and more accurate. Once we've installed that, we'll just, uh, lay the other flap of webbing on top of the other. And then we'll take a number 16 hand needle, pre-wax twine, and a palm, and we'll start to insert the needle through the center. We'll leave enough trailing pre-wax twine at the end so we can uh, loop it underneath some of these loops. We're going to create figure 8 loops here. We're going to do several of them, at least uh, three on each side. So we're going to loop that around this one side, and then we're going to come around the other side, insert the needle through the center of the webbing again, locking it in place, and then we'll uh, tighten it up and be sure to uh, that trailing twine is tucked under this loop, and we'll continue doing that at least, again, three times on each side. So three complete figure eights. There's one complete figure eight. Make sure it uh, lays on top of that webbing as well. Tighten it up. So we'll do it three times now. And here we are coming around again. I think you have the idea and we're not going to show anything more. We're going to cut it off here and show the finishing steps. Okay. After at least three passes of the figure eight have been done, then we'll take that uh, twine and we'll tuck it in one of those uh, uh, loops that we created on the back side of this assembly. Then I usually like to push it through the center again and then tuck it on the top side as well. Now when you get through, when you're doing this and the more you insert the needle through the center, the harder it is to pull it out. So sometimes I'll take pliers to pull it out. Now I'll tuck it again on the top side as I explained earlier. And then we'll simply take a hot knife and we'll cut that twine and then we'll melt it so that it creates a nice button. To create this button, we simply want to take the hot knife and melt the ends of the twine so it makes a nice button. And leave about a quarter inch or a half inch, melt it. And then after it's cooled a teeny bit, don't let it cool too long, just take your thumb and push on it and that creates a nice button that will not come undone. Do that here for that other trailing leg. There we are. That's it. That's one of the installations and the installation that we usually recommend for a batten-in protector on a full batten sale. Looks good.